In this video we're going to look at compositions of inverse functions, meaning a function within a function. And we've already talked about the fact that when you take an inverse and you substitute it into an original function, you get x back. And if you take the original function and you substitute it into the inverse, you also get x back. But remember, we have to be careful with the domain restrictions. And so when you take the, the sine of an inverse sine of x, that's equal to x. Remember, x right here, the input for an inverse sine function is a trig ratio, and the domain is from negative 1 to 1. So our, our input and our output value have to be um, between negative 1 and 1 and including negative 1 and 1. Now when you take the inverse sine of the sine of x, now we know the sine of x is has a domain of all real numbers. But when you take the inverse sign of that uh, value, your output value has to be in the domain of the inverse sign. So your answer has to be between negative 2 and pi over 2 inclusive. So for inverse cosine, our input values have to be from negative 1 to 1. Uh, when we take the inverse cosine of the cosine of x, this is an angle. And remember, our angle has to be between 0 and pi for an inverse cosine function. And for inverse tan, the input value for inverse tan, the domain, can be any real number. But when you have the output, the output value for an inverse tan has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So let's jump in and try a couple of these problems. And I, I did put a warning here. Uh, the following problems are really tricky. Uh, the caution is that when the outside function is an inverse, your final answer should be an angle, right? Because an inverse means the angle whose sine, cosine, or tangent is. When the outside function is a trig function, your answer should be a trigonometric ratio. So let's look at example one. It says evaluate the following composition functions using inverse trigonometric, uh, involving inverse trigonometric functions. I want the inverse sine of the sine of pi over 4. So I want the angle whose sine is the sine of pi over 4. Well, since pi over 4 is in the range of values, uh, the range of the output values for, for inverse sine, my answer is going to be pi over 4. So let's try this, and we can do this the long way. Working from inside out, we could say, all right, I want the inverse sine uh, whatever the sine of pi over 4 is. So the sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2, and then the inverse sine of square root of 2 over 2 is going to be pi over 4. We know that inverse sine is coming from the first quadrant, from 0 to pi over 2, and also we could go from 0 to negative pi over 2 if the trig ratio was negative. Now this next function the inverse sine of the sine of 5 pi over 4. Now the answer would be 5 pi over 4 if we follow that rule for when you take an inverse and you um, input a function, you should get x back. But the problem is that the, the output value for an inverse sine has to be a first, when uh, output sine either has to be a first quadrant positive angle um, or a fourth quadrant, um, you know, negative angle, or acute angle. And so 5 pi over 4 is over here. Now that doesn't mean we, we don't have an answer. It just means the answer is not 5 pi over 4. So if we evaluate the sine of 5 pi over 4 first, so we know that the reference angle 5 pi over 4 is over here. This would be 4 pi over 4. So we know the reference angle would be pi over 4. Right. And so we're going to get the inverse sine. We want the trig ratio. So the sine of 5 pi over 4, I know that it's going to be 
the same trig ratio as the sine of pi over 4, but since we're in quadrant 3, it's got to be negative. So the trig ratio in here is negative square root of 2 over 2. So the inverse sine of negative square root of 2 over 2, when inverse sine is negative, the angle has to come from the fourth quadrant, so it's going to be negative pi over 4. Okay. Let's try another one. The inverse cosine of the cosine of pi over 6. Since pi over 6 is a value that is in the range of the inverse cosine function, then the answer is pi over 6. If I want to do that the long way, I can just evaluate working from the inside out. I know the cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2. And I know the inverse cosine of the square root of 3 over 2. Right? When cosine, inverse cosine of a positive number is a first quadrant angle. Now the inverse cosine of the cosine of negative pi over 4 is not negative pi over 4. So because negative pi over 4 is not in the range of values that you're allowed to use for inverse cosine. Inverse cosine outputs are from 0 to pi. I'm going to evaluate the cosine of negative pi over 4. Cosine of negative pi over 4 is the same thing as the cosine of pi over 4 since cosine is an even function. I want the inverse cosine of the square root of 2 over 2. The inverse cosine of the square root of 2 over 2 since that's positive, it's going to be in the first quadrant. It's going to be pi over 4. Right, let's try another one. We have the sine of the inverse sine of the square root of 3 over 2. Now let's look back for a second. In the first four problems, the outside function was an inverse cosine or inverse sine. It was an inverse. And the answer to an inverse trig function, or the output value, is always going to be an angle. Notice these answers were all angles. Right. Now, we, now we have a scenario where the outside function is a trig function, so your answer, your output, should be a trig ratio. So again, I can do this a short way if I recognize that the square root of 3 over 2 is a value that is in the output, right, in the range from negative 1 to 1, and sine, the output values for sine are from negative 1 to 1. So the answer is the square root of 3 over 2. Now, if I work this out the long way, if I work from inside out, if I take the sine of whatever, the angle whose sine is square root of 3 over 2, the angle whose sine is the square root of 3 over 2 is pi over 3, and the sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. All right, let's try this one. The cosine of the inverse cosine of 1.8. Uh, now, again, we would say, oh, that should be 1.8 because it's a, a function and it's inverse. The answer should be x. But the problem is that 1.8 is not a value that is in the range for cosine. And it's also not in the domain of inverse cosine. Remember, inverse cosine is from negative 1 to 1. There's your domain. And so the answer to this is no solution. So I'd like you to pause the video and try the two problems below, and then start the video up and check your answer. All right, for number one, we have the inverse tan of the tan of pi over 6. Uh, we know since the outside function is an inverse, our answer will be an angle. And since pi over 6 is in the range of values that you're allowed to have as an output for inverse tan, the answer is pi over 6. For the cosine of the inverse cosine of negative pi over 2, since negative, uh, excuse me, negative 1 half, um, negative one-half is in the domain for inverse cosine and it's also in the range of values for cosine and so your answer is negative one-half. Alright, and for each of these you can work this out the long way and say alright, well, let me just evaluate working from the inside out.
the tangent of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 3 and the angle whose tangent is pi over 6 remember tangent when to inverse tangent um, input is positive you're looking for a first quadrant angle so that would be pi over 6 for number 2 the angle whose cosine is negative 1 half that would be cosine is negative in the second quadrant so we're looking for a second quadrant angle the reference angle for one half is going to be pi over three and so this angle would be three pi over three so this would be two pi over three so I'd want the cosine of two pi over three which is equal to negative one half I'd like you to try one more before we end this video. Why don't you evaluate the inverse cosine of the cosine of negative pi over 3. Okay, pause the video, try that one, and then turn the video on to check that one out. So we know that the answer is not negative pi over 3 because I know my answer has to be an angle because the outside function is an inverse cosine. But negative pi over 3 is not an option because the domain, uh, excuse me, the range of values for inverse cosine is from 0 to pi. So what I can do is evaluate the cosine of negative pi over 3. So I'll have the inverse cosine of whatever the cosine of negative pi over 3 is. Since cosine is an even function, it's the same as the cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half. And I want the angle whose cosine is 1 half. So my answer would be pi over 3. All right, in the next video, we're going to use triangles to evaluate um, composition of inverse trig functions.